became aware of this on the 4th of July, and uh, then on Tuesday morning, uh, it became a national news story. And you heard about the kids living in shed taken into custody. And, and, and actually what it was was a retrofitted large 12 by 25 foot shed. There are a lot of families living in tents around this country now, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, I didn't jump the gun on this. I did a lot of research into the family, into the Leonards. And they are Christians. They are homeschooling. Uh, you can look at photos and videos of their children, uh, sparkly eyes, healthy they don't have that zombie uh, riddling look of most kids. Uh, they're Christian people. He was a welder. He lost his job three years ago and couldn't get credit for a house. The only job he could get was running a boat and a storage uh, shed, uh, an RV park facility. So it's an RV park. That's why folks didn't look down. A lot of them are old timers who stay in the RV park. They remember growing up when they were in a log cabin or on dirt floors. So he's the maintenance man there, and he retrofitted it with air conditioners and computers and electricity, and they've got community bathrooms there. And uh, he'd been saving his money up for almost three years. They were actually getting ready to get a home. And the CPS came, and they didn't have any help for this family. A family didn't want welfare. And CPS is trained. I have their textbooks, even the University of Texas has for social workers. Uh, we've posted this on the Prison Planet Forum years ago. People don't ever believe this stuff where they say the family is archaic, needs to be eradicated, that the state is going to run everything, and already Germany's trying to pass laws to do this. Um, the family courts were set up 1910 or so in the U.S., about 1900 to England, where it all started for racial hygiene. Germany didn't adopt this till 33 when Hitler got in. It wasn't widespread till 35. They had eugenics courts for sterilization, the taking of single mothers' children. Uh, especially ones that Hitler wanted for the military. Blonde-haired, blue-eyed, single parent, boom, your kids are gone. If you were an, another group they didn't like, they would just kill you. And when they, uh, six kids is a prize for CPSC. If you didn't know this, over 70%, you can pull these numbers up, or just type DynCorp running CPS operations, uh, a little over 70% of CPS are actual private contractors just like contractors in Afghanistan or Iraq, private contractors uh, going around grabbing kids, and they actually get bonuses off of how many children they get. And off six children, you're looking at several hundred thousand dollars that they're going to get in a year off them of federal and state money and expand their operations. Then uh, big campaign contributions are given by the big orphanages and the places that place the children with foster parents and I've seen cases of some of these people that run these, these rackets in Austin, some of the directors making three, four million dollars a year individually in Austin and Dallas in cases we've covered. They then fence out the quote better kids to uh, through adoption agencies if they're smaller. With the older ones they grab, and these children are ages, what, uh, 12 to, to, to two, they will hop them up because statistically a lot of Christian families do want black children, but they're not in as much demand. Uh, and then they got the black groups, a lot of times funded by the government, lobbying that whites not be able to save these black children because there are Christian white folks particularly that will adopt black kids in mass, try to save them. Um, and they have big black groups fighting against whites adopting blacks. Uh, yeah, it's funny, the NAACP, if the police beat a gang member, there's will be a big demonstration and lawsuits, but when they're grabbing and hunting black children, and when 52% of blacks are never born in this country and aborted, um, it's not even a news item. It's, it, it's not even discussed. But uh, I digress here. This is a Christian homeschooling family. Uh, and uh, he, he's a carpenter and a handyman he, and welder. He retrofitted this as a home. And I've seen video inside the house. This little house pretty nice. Many of our presidents grew up in things a lot you know, worse than this. And, and by the way, they go through it in the articles that CPS takes people from rural areas that have outhouses. Folks, I've got family. I mean, I've got a lot of family way out in the country who've got nice homes, uh, but just until recently had outhouses um, because, you know, they're, they're, they're 10 miles from water or they've got a well and a pump on it, but sometimes it breaks. They've got an outhouse as well. They, the CPS is on record in the San Antonio Express News, Houston Chronicle, saying you got an outhouse, your kids are gone. You don't have air conditioning, your kids are gone. Uh, if you if you store their clothes in boxes, you are. I mean, this is in the news. And CPS says yes, that is abuse. Now, 
they had in 2000 the cover of Time magazine, The Shame of Foster Care, admitting that you're five times more likely to be abused in government custody than with your parents. So th this is the most abusive group. And this is where the pedophiles go to get jobs and other things. Am I saying every one of you is a pedophile? No. Um, once in traffic and once at a grocery store, effeminate, pot-bellied, pedophile-type men that fit the archetype would came up and got mad at me in traffic and once in a grocery store and were like going, I hate you, and showing their teeth. And I said, you're a CPS worker. And they just completely, I rolled my window and I said, you're a CPS worker, aren't you? I could just look at them instantly and they would go, you, how do you know? Because I know. I know, I know. I, I used to fight CPS back 15, 14 years ago when I was just local, uh, and it tore my guts out so bad that 10 years ago I had to stop because I would go into these situations. I would get the documents. I'd try to get them lawyers, and I would cry. I would lose sleep because I was containing feelings of extreme violence, which are natural when you've got predators grabbing children. So here's the bottom line. They didn't help this family. You know, if you're illegal aliens with 10 kids, that you'll get everything. Or if you'll be a black woman or a white woman or a Hispanic woman and not have a husband in the house, they'll give you all the money you ever wanted and leave you alone. That's where they also recruit a lot of their CPS workers. I've noticed as former welfare people. But if you're a black man bucking the trend of 91% of blacks being illegitimate, which then triples their chances of prison, quadruples their chances of drug abuse. If you buck the engineering, blacks were only about 45% illegitimate pre-1950. Now this is starting to happen to whites as well. Everybody, they start with the blacks first. They see as a group that's been targeted and that folks somehow just you know don't think are uh, the same as everybody else, so they allow it to be done to them first as a beta test. As Tony Brown has said, what you let be done to black folks, don't worry, it's coming to your neighborhood. And... They don't like a black man working hard and building a home for his family. They don't like a guy who, who, who doesn't go on welfare. They don't like a Christian. They don't like a man taking care of his children and raising his boys and his girls. So they came and took them. And now I've talked to the lawyers involved and others, even though I've now learned there were groups trying to get them a house, CPS wants to keep the kids. This is about to be on... Uh, KHOU is about to have them on, and if folks are tr uh, people have already stepped forward. I, I said I was going to do it. Folks have stepped forward with the house. CPS says no. The CPS has a goal, and every year under the federal regulations, the quota goes up of how many children they grab. And again, the illegal aliens, I think they should be left alone by CPS, but they're off limits. They build shanty towns all over the place. I can take you to Austin to some right now. They're left alone. At golf courses everywhere, uh, there are shacks and things on the back 40 where whole families of illegals live. But that's okay. You get, though, an Americanized Hispanic or black person, white person, whatever the case may be, and you try to have an air-conditioned metal housing there at a RV slash uh, boat storage uh, park with st storage facilities. He builds a little house while he's saving money being the maintenance man there after losing his job that was better paid as a welder three years ago and losing his home in this depression and they come for you. In the Great Depression, there were tens of millions of homeless people living in tents, living out of cars. D d did the government come and, 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 and spend three, four times the money to grab the children, to house the children? than it would cost to just help the people? No, the government didn't take their children and the government didn't help the people. Didn't do either. But in this case, it's private CPS with contracts with these fraudulent family courts and they come in all, I see this all the time. Uh, cases, I see it every few months. It, it's almost always, uh, you know, young, Middle class, uh, the, the, the archetype MO is kind of quasi well-educated young 20-year-old hippie couples who will buy an RV and the dad will work in town at an odd job, but they live out in an RV park in an RV and pump it out, you know, once a week and whatever. And the kids are really healthy and happy. And the CPS comes and takes them and says, because you're living in an RV park or because uh, you're vegetarian or because and it just goes on and on and on. So that's that type. Now, boy, let me tell you, you got white kids and you're living in an RV, your kids are gone because they're going to get 300 to half a million dollars. 
300,000 to half a mil on those children in the open market. Because rich people will pay a lot of money for a white kid. Uh, most of the white people I see have got kidnapped Hispanic kids or black kids because it's so hard to get a white kid. And I see it everywhere. And the parents, of course, are totally unaware of where their children came from. They have no idea what a racket in the business this is. Now, the bad news is a lot of folks, for whatever reason, one of the most uh, hard-to-adopt groups is black children. They get where, and why are they valuable? Well, the DynCor groups and others first get them. That's who runs these things, subsidiaries of DynCor and others. They get the children, and they make a lot of money out of them. But then once they have their psychologist say, the child screaming and crying for their parents, that's mental illness, you go on Ritalin. Then they get more depressed. Then they go on Prozac. Uh, and on average, I've shown the state hearings here, it's the same nationwide average, 68% of foster children nationwide, and again, that's the state average in Texas, you can Google it, headline, more than two-thirds of Texas foster children on, uh, on more than seven drugs. And they take them. Then the children, after five, six drugs, start having seizures. Then they put them on anti-seizure medication. By the time they're 20, they are mind-blown zombies. And they throw them out. And I've seen studies done. I've gone and talked to them. You see a lot of these old homeless people who aren't even drunks. Uh, a lot of them are black. And, and, and you know they'll be 30, 40 years old, look like they're 60, all on the side of the corners talking to themselves. If you go talk to them, they'll say, you're talking to me? I'll say, tell me your story. Well, when I was nine in Mississippi, they took me from my mama and my daddy. We lived back in the swamp. And then they, you're not going to take me. You're not going to take me. They, they, they gave me the drugs, and they shocked me. And they did it until we saw my mama again. They took my mama and sterilized her. I mean, I mean, go talk to them. Go, go find out who these humans are. And these six children, they're going to slow murder their minds as well. They can't wait to kill them. Just like they did to Hemingway. And I am not going to sit here and put up with it anymore. They will take them and they will get 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 100,000. That's why they put them on average seven drugs, 68%. And then there was testimony, it's in my film Endgame, the tech, to, to, to the legislature. And Susanna Hupp, the good representative, and others are saying, why are 68% on an average of seven drugs? He goes, they come from bad gene pools. They're subhuman. They deserve it. And that's what they do. They grab the black and Hispanic children, and they are happy. And there's doctors in the WOAI TV piece they did a few years ago admitting that they work, who blew the whistle. They said they take healthy, happy kids, and two years later, in some cases, they're dead. They kill them. They put them on so many drugs to get them on. Let me finish up with this whole case, and as things develop, we'll continue to report on it. Uh, I put out a video this morning um, at the Alex Jones channel on YouTube, uploaded for my iPhone 4, uh, you know, directly there, basically in live time. Alert, help save six kidnapped children. Now, we've now talked to some of the lawyers involved. We've talked to some of the reporters involved at KHOU. Uh, my wife's been on the phone all morning, and reportedly they're getting ready to interview the uh, Leonard family that had their six children taken away for being poor uh, and living in a retrofitted met uh, metal building with, with, with air conditioning and, uh, and power and computers and everything. I mean, is it a crime to not have air conditioner? Yes, CPS is in the news saying, we'll even take you for that. So I guess everybody pre-1950s and the advent of uh, the popularization of air conditioning would have your children taken. And I was intending uh, to go down there, and I'm still thinking about it because KHOU is set to report, we're told, that someone has stepped forward with a house for them. And I was just going to give them money and, and then call for listeners to show them some houses that they would rent them at a good price, and then I would, you know, pay for six months or something. Uh, I think $10,000 actually would, for a half decent house, probably pay for a year down in Houston that wasn't in too fancy of an area or close to it. But, but, but see, that doesn't mean CPS would even let them go. They claim you're neglectful because you would live with your children. And you've got six children. They say that's too many. They have a whole eugenics angle. Um, they went on to say, um, well, the point is, is that we have to call their Trump. We have to call their, 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 their scam. Uh, and, 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 and we have to trump them with 
getting this family the help they need. And people say, well, there's a million families this is happening to. Well, the point is, is that you point out this is wrong. You don't just lackadaisically act like it's no big deal. I, I called lawyers this morning trying to get, uh, find out where they lived uh, that I'd seen in the news. I, I, I called TV stations, radio stations, uh, KHO, you and others finally helped. Uh, they act like humans. Uh, the Chronicle had articles they published saying it was wrong what happened. So I'm not just bashing the Houston Chronicle here, but I, I got on the phone with one guy and, and, and my wife was being very polite. And then I got on the phone because the guy wasn't helping. And I said, listen, he goes, I'm not helping another news agency. And I said, sir, uh, normally if this was a media thing. I'd have my producer call you. Uh, I said, I said, I'm calling you. You can Google Alex Jones. He goes, I know, I know. And I, so I think he was saying he knew who I was. And I said, I built a veteran, a new house, built Memorial Church. You know, I, I like to you know, have examples of, 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 of coming to people's aid to get other people to have the same attitude and to point out what's happening. I mean, things pull on my heartstrings. And I said, please, you know where this is. Uh, just, just, just tell us where it is. It's not in the report. And he, he said, no, you can try to talk to the reporter later if you want. It made me very, very angry. And the guy was pretty much laughing at me. It was very... I guess people probably don't even believe there are folks that care. Like, it's bad to even care. It's bad to think CPS grabbing kids for no reason is wrong. It's bad to not want TSA to stick their hands down your pants. It's bad to not want the president to launch new wars without congressional approval. It's bad. And I run into so many people that have this attitude, but uh, the Houston Chronicle uh, did run a report uh, that was very fair, and so did... Uh, the Austin American Statesman, uh, San Antonio Express News, uh, uh, you know, th th but th th they don't care if 90% of the articles are against what uh, TSA is doing. TSA just goes forward. They don't care, CPS. I, I mean, they're mercenaries. They're going to get money off these children because they're not agencies there to help you. They're there to take your children. If you want to uh, say you can be on welfare, can't have a man in the house, uh, you know, live in crack-infested neighborhoods and then go into juvenile when you're young and learn how to be a criminal so the inner cities can become engines of, 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 of crime wave after crime wave and riots and racial tension. That's all wonderful. That's what the system wants. They don't like, with only 9% of blacks being, quote, legitimate, coming from a, you know, a married couple, uh, non-broken homes, they don't, they don't like that 9%. They target them. And uh, what, 50 years ago, 90 plus percent of whites were legitimate. Now over 50 percent are illegitimate. Same stuff that happened to blacks. Social degeneration is now happening. Uh, blacks were less than 50 percent illegitimate, but pre-1950, now 91 percent. And I mean, it's just civilization is collapsing because they'll give you that welfare. Keep that man out of the house. Put your kids in the inner city schools. Do this. But, oh, you're a black man that lost his job three years ago and took a lower job and built and retrofitted at the place that you manage as a maintenance man. You've been saving money for a house, how we built this country. And you homeschool your children. I've seen video and photos. Great looking, happy. You can see electric Christian children. Those of you that love to bash Christians, you ever really known real Christians? Poor people? Go into neighborhoods where it's people are really poor. And the Christians' yards are straight, they're hardworking, they have loving eyes, they're good people, they're happy, they appreciate life. And right next to them, you'll have burnout motorcycles and cars on blocks and people beating their kids and hell on earth, and they're all on welfare. And right next door, you got the poor Christians who aren't on welfare, and the CPS is at their house every month trying to take their kids. They're targeting these people. They're targeting homeschoolers, even wealthy homeschoolers, taking them away in California, Michigan, uh, busting down doors, demanding to be let in to see the curriculum. Uh, doesn't matter if the homeschoolers are winning all the big spelling bees and geography bees. The system wants to shut it down. They don't want people to flee outside their system. And as the economy implodes, are they going to take more and more children? I sent Rob Dew. We have footage of this. We did reports. What was it now, two years ago, Rob? I sent him to the tent cities in Sacramento and Los Angeles where there are families living out there. Now they've made them all move off that, same thing in Hawaii, and they lock them up at night at the sports stadium at facilities. And if you've got kids, they take them. They t these aren't drunks and drug addicts. In fact, a lot of these people, when I was at the Capitol a few weeks ago, I came out, and this, you could tell he was special forces, this big, like six foot four black guy, and was riding on a bicycle with a headset on. 
and he uh, he uh, pulled over, and he said, "Oh, Alex Jones, I just love you. I heard you were here. That's why I came down here." And he had his little ear. He goes, "I listen to you all the time." He goes, "I was, you know, eight years, you know, uh, special forces, uh, Green Beret. You, you could tell talking to the guy. He was, you know, scary." And you could tell this is a tough guy. And he was like, he's like, you know, that I got out, they won't give me anything. And I'm homeless. I've been saving money for two years to try to get out of this. But I've been, and he was all clean, too. You could tell he'd been living on the street for two years trying to save money. And he's like, the police harass me when I'm out here homeless. He's probably listening right now. This is where our soldiers are. This is what they've turned. I mean, you know, I mean, he was like, I was in, the, I was in this country. I was in. I was in Colombia. I was in Desert Storm. I was in all these wars. And you're right. As soon as I got out of there, they they, they had nothing. Uh, it just, it just, he just went on and on and on and on. And I was sitting there talking to this guy, uh, who looked like a really high quality person. And 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 you know, if he had kids, would they take his kids? This is outrageous. So I wanted to go ahead and play the original KHOU uh, report uh, with the family. Uh, here and and then later today they're reportedly going to interview the family and folks are trying now offer them a house and money but that doesn't mean the CPS aren't going to try to keep them that's uh, they're going to try to keep those kids because they're mercenaries and you're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars a year on six kids and they will drug them 68 percent of the time and they'll put them on average seven drugs they will they will they will destroy these children's minds because again by listing them as and and it's on record if you cry for your mother and father. You are drugged immediately. That is mental illness. It is abnormal to throw fits or demand to have your parents. Can you imagine my, I've got an eight-year-old, a seven-year-old, and a three-year-old, and they don't like it when we have a part-time nanny come over, even though they're great people, they want to be with us. Or my, or when even relatives come over to keep them sometimes. They really love us. They really want to be with us. I can't imagine the pain this family, and because I have empathy for them, uh, I, I'm the bad guy. Even see on the YouTube channel, some folks going, "Good, they need to be taken. They're living in a, in a, in a, you know, you know, in a storage shed." The way the media spun that. I mean, it, it, like, it doesn't matter. It, the point is that he retrofitted it. It had air conditioning. It had refrigerator. It had power. Uh, you know, there in a, it probably sounds like a fun place to live. You know, there with people living in their RVs and they got storage sheds and people storing their boats there. And he's the maintenance man. I mean, I got to tell you, folks, just like in the movie Caddyshack, the maintenance man lives at the greenhouse. I grew up in Dallas uh, on a uh, you know me medium tier golf course, nothing fancy, the neighborhood, and there was a big sprawling complex back in the woods, back in the area where the maintenance people were, and a couple of them lived there. They were pretty much illegal aliens, and I remember getting to know them and some of their kids. In fact, one of them named was Mario, and he had a son uh, for the first year he was there who the family lived there. And I'd play soccer with his son and stuff, and then later he ended up starting his own uh, lawn company and became wealthy. And I remember going over to their house you know, a decade later in high school, and they lived in a house bigger than we had. And uh, But you know, the American dream, the point is you're going to take, take Mario's son. What was his name? Said Julio, the point is, is that is this is what America is. How do you think our immigrant ancestors that came here lived? How do you think of 35 million people in Mexico City? Half of them live in cardboard boxes. You can take all their kids. It's not your. Fault. And this guy was working. This guy was working, and they took him. And and the point is, they didn't help him. The government will put you on welfare and put you in a Section 8 housing, but they won't come to you and say, "Well, you need help." We're going to help you get a house. No. And how many people are having their houses taken? How many people are having to move in with their parents or move in with their brothers and sisters? All right, let's go ahead and go to this uh, clip. Here it is. Thought their home was safe, but the state disagreed. On the other end. But look again. It has a freezer section. We keep the frozen vegetables and meat. Sort of like shoes under the shelving. A secondary computer. This is home. This is home. Turns out home for the Leonards and their six children is a 12-foot wide, 25-foot long Northeast Houston storage shed. But you have to make the best of what you have. They moved in three years ago after the father, an unemployed welder, got hired here as a maintenance worker. They couldn't afford an apartment and the homeless shelter didn't seem safe enough. It's not safer here. You know, it's secure. We can let our kids go out and play. Hard times led the Leonards to this storage facility, but it was a passer by's observation that led to a fight with the state 
over the custody of their kids. Ah, tattletale. Someone told Child Protective Services that there appeared to be unattended children on the property. A caseworker investigated and the state took custody of the kids. We didn't do anything wrong. We're doing the best that we can for our children. A CPS spokesperson says the children were removed because the storage shed is a dangerous environment. A local activist is fighting to reunite the family. You don't take people's children and snatch them away from families and separate children strictly because their parents are poor and fall on no hard times. I want my children back with me, where they belong. Back in a home that's far from ordinary. In Northeast Houston, Rux Russell, KHOU 11 News. If now, um, it, it's a big metal, you know, peaked roof, uh, fence all the way around it, giant facility. People see kids running around, so they call and the state comes. Why don't you call on Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan imploding the economy by design? Why don't you call for Obama to be impeached for launching illegal wars? Why don't you go after the real issues instead of six children, one girl, five boys uh, running around behind a fence? And I can't tell you how many hundreds of cases I've seen in 16 years in even wealthy areas where people see children playing behind a cyclone fence in their own yard. And the CPS comes saying, the mother's like, I was watching them out the window. They're in the backyard. Sorry, I could tell you how many wealthy people are even at school and fall off a merry-go-round and break their finger or their arm. And the CPS goes ahead and comes and tries to take them. And then three days later in court, they have to bring in the school admitting it even happened there. Your child falls off the swing at the park. They're going to try to take your children. Okay? This is what America has become. And these aren't real courts. Now, I want to give you, if we can back it up, you can actually see on the sign the name of the facility. Um, about a minute into that video, uh, you can see it, it looks like Oats RV. Uh, but we've tried to find that 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 number online, and, and uh, yeah, Boat RV is, is, is you know is the name of the storage facility, and he's the maintenance man, and he lives there in air conditioning in a big metal building, and it's a big giant building. He's only got one part of it, and it's at the twelve uh, the twelve thousand block of McNair M C N A I R. And Boat RV is, 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 is the sign on the facility. The 12,000 block of McNair. And you can put that in McNair, 12,000 block of McNair. It's at the end of the road on Google Maps. And uh, there it is. I mean, there's it, a big parkland all around it. It looks like a semi-rural area. Uh, actually, uh, the, 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 uh, looks like some lower middle class uh, houses across the street. And uh, that's it. And you, you, you got your kids living in a metal building with air conditioning and computers and everything else. They're going to take them. Uh, and that's how they operate in America. Now, I know I've spent pretty much most of this first hour on this subject. And they don't even tell you who that activist is on the newscast or I would get him on. It's been really hard. And again, you, you call it the Chronicle and you go, hey, uh, I'm a radio talk show host. I'd like to give these people some money. I'd like to try to help him get a house. Is, um, can you, do you have any contacts for him? Do you have the number at that for that place's office? And they just say, I'm not going to help another news agency. I'm like, but I'm not a news agency. That's what I told Talkers Magazine a month ago. I said, I'm not in an industry. I'm, I'm on a mission. Like the Blues Brothers say, we're on a mission from God. Uh, I, I mean, I'm on a mission. At the end of the day, we raise money and capital to expand our overall operation, but uh, KHOU and others have not acted like that when we've called them. And maybe I just got the wrong person on the phone at the Chronicle at their news desk, but uh, you know, I don't like being laughed at and just complete arrogance. I guess they didn't believe I was like, I really want to help these people. Uh, and um, I mean, <laughs> there's hundreds of cases of this every week without even looking. I mean, it's just, it's endless. I even try to stay away from this because it freaks me out too much. It's just, it's so fundamentally evil that this is going on and that we have a new video of a guy being arrested in his front yard. He's all the way back in his garage filming cops, searching a woman TSA style, you know, her breast and everything. Now they just pull you over, put you in handcuffs before they conduct a search without probable cause. And then he calls them Nazis and it is a Nazi style tactic. And they come over and they say, we're gonna get you for too tall a grass. Looks like it's about three inches tall. 
Then they say, we're going to get you for uh, disorderly conduct. He says, get off my property. I'm leaving. They said, no. They come into his garage. They say, we're going to charge you for a racial slur talking bad about Nazis. Folks, the video's on Infowars.com. I know that sounds insane, but they really do. You're not allowed to talk bad about Nazis now. Uh, but again, there's not even laws against racial slurs in this country. This is the political correctness that now you can't call people Nazis that are engaging in type of police activities the Third Reich did. Of course, the Third Reich had good reasons for what they were doing, according to them, uh, as well. All right, we've got a bunch of other news coming up here, but um, I'm, I'm probably going to have to go to Houston to try to help these people. I mean, somebody's got to do it.